Okay, so are you good in algebra? Well, if you say that you are, then you should be able to solve this equation rather easily. But a lot of you out there, you know, might, you know, not be all that confident in your algebra skills. And you still might figure this uh, problem out, but you might take kind of a longer road or a harder approach. Now, in algebra and in mathematics, there's all different sorts of types of equations. So the first thing you need to do is to identify what type of equation you're dealing with. Then you want to think about the various uh, methods and procedures and tools that you have in order to solve that type of equation. So if you know how to solve this equation, put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then I'm going to walk through and tell you exactly what type of equation this is and the best way to solve it. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching uh, middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need help in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I really don't want to give you too many hints here on what type of equation this is, because I want to give you a full opportunity to think about it all on your own. But uh, if you've already answered it, let's go ahead and see the actual answer. Okay, of course, we're trying to solve for the variable x. So what is the answer? Well, actually, there are two solutions. Okay, and here they are. x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to negative 5 fourths. Okay, so this is the correct uh, answer. Now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving quadratic equations. They won't know what that means, but it just sounds so cool. So just tell them anyways, they'll be uh, very impressed indeed. Now, if you didn't get this right, I'm going to explain exactly how to do this type of problem, and we'll go through a nice quick um, overview of quadratic equations. Now, you might be saying to yourself, quadratic equations, I don't even know what that is, or maybe you've heard something about quadratic equations. Well, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, things like, you know, first year algebra and beyond, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, things like that, then you must be a certified expert in solving quadratic equations as they are a big part of what you are learning. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So uh, what we're dealing with here is a quadratic equation. Okay, so you gotta be able to identify that. And let's just talk a little bit about uh, quadratic equations. So there's all sorts of technical definitions in mathematics. I'm not a big fan of having you memorize, you know, uh, you know, like, the exact technical definition of something, but it's important that you recognize, you know, a type of equation because there's all different sorts of equations in algebra. Okay, there's quadratic equations, systems of equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations, rational equations, radical, I can go on and on and on. So you get it. So you got to be able to identify what type of equation you're dealing with. Then you're like, oh, this is this type of equation. I need to think about how to solve that type of equation. And you learn various uh, methods and techniques to solve those particular type of equations. But here, what we have is a binomial times another binomial, okay? Now, a binomial is a type of polynomial, okay? So that's another word that you probably heard in algebra. So we're talking about polynomials, all right? And I don't wanna go into too much of a deep dive here on what a polynomial is, but it's really, really important that you understand it. Effectively, a polynomial, let me just give you a quick definition being that I'm talking about it, is something like this. Okay, this is a monomial, which is the most basic type of polynomial. But if you have a variable like x, or you can even have x, y, and the powers, okay, are zero, or any basically positive integer, so things like zero or two, not negative, it's gotta be zero or positive, and you can have any real number as a coefficient. So here we have four, but I could have like 5.3. So anything like that uh, falls under the definition of being a polynomial. But you know, you don't even really need to you know understand that to recognize this 
as a binomial times a binomial. Again, I'm talking to those of you that are like at the first year algebra level. And what we can do here is you could multiply these together. Okay, so we're dealing with a quadratic equation because we're going to end up with an x squared term. Okay, if I take this 4x and multiply it by this x, I'm going to end up with a 4x, uh, 4x squared as my leading coefficient. Okay, so anyways, hopefully, you know, what I just told you makes sense. And you're like, okay, I get it, Mr. YouTube Math Man. This is a quadratic equation. Continue on, please. Don't bore me over and over. Well, <laughs> I get the picture. Let's keep moving here. All right. So let's suppose you're like, yes, I get this. This is a quadratic equation. So let's just talk about quadratic equations, right? What do you need to know about quadratic equations? So as soon as you're thinking, oh, this is a quadratic equation, these are the things that should pop into your brain. So the first thing is you're always going to have two solutions. Okay, right off the bat, you're, you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm not looking for one solution like x is equal to 5. You're looking for two solutions, and quadratic equations will always, always, always have two solutions. Now, these solutions could be real number solutions and or imaginary number solutions, uh, and that is kind of for uh, additional videos. You know, this is kind of a basic problem, but there's all different sorts of different types of quadratic equations. Just know you will have two solutions. Okay, let's talk about the various techniques you can use to solve quadratic equations. Now, one is, and this all depends upon the uh, format or the type of quadratic equation you're dealing with, right? There's all different sorts. Sometimes you could take the square root of both sides to solve a quadratic equation. So if I had something like x squared is equal to 16, I could take the square root of both sides and solve for x. Okay, in this case, x would be equal to positive negative 4. Now, sometimes you can't do that, right? But sometimes you can factor, okay? So if you know how to factor trinomials or factor the greatest common factor, then this is an excellent way to solve quadratic equations. We'll talk more about this here in a second. Okay, but you definitely have to be excellent at factoring to be successful in algebra. But these are the uh, various tools that you, or things you um, they want to be thinking about when you're dealing with a quadratic equation. You're like, okay, I got two solutions. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I can factor to solve. If you can't do these two techniques, well, then you can always do this uh, thing here, and that is the quadratic formula. Okay, You're always guaranteed 100% of the time to solve every single quadratic uh, equation out there using the quadratic formula. But this is kind of like your you know, uh, last uh, resort. Okay, You want to try to use other techniques, but if you can't use anything else, you can always solve uh, a quadratic equation by using a quadratic formula. Now, if you don't even know what this is, I have tons of additional videos on this material. And if you really want to um, get like my best full instruction on any of this, I'll leave my uh, links to my most popular math courses in the description. Check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. Um, uh, you'll see those links in the description. If you happen to be in pre-calculus, I'll leave the link for that course uh, there as well. Okay, so what's this here? Uh, CTS. Well, it's just an abbreviation for completing the square. It's kind of like the long version of uh, doing the quadratic formula. Uh, and it's something you need to know, but it's not really like, let's say, the most practical way to solve quadratic equations. And another thing about uh, quadratic equations, quadratic functions that you need to know, is that they're associated with the shape of a parabola. Okay, so in other words, it's a U shape that could be like this, a happy U, or an upside down U, a sad U. Okay, so there's a lot to know about quadratic equations. And let me put in another thing here too. They are a polynomial, okay, uh, specifically a second degree polynomial. So at this point, you might, you know, kind of like just be exacerbated. You're like, this is just too much information. Maybe there's smoke coming out your ears or whatnot like that. You're like, this is too much. You're overloading me. I don't need to know all this stuff. I can just find the variable. Well, listen, if you truly want to uh, kind of master and fully comprehend, you know, algebra and beyond, yes, you do need to know this stuff. Okay, so never try to take shortcuts in math because they're always uh, both backfire. All right. So hopefully you learned something from, from this quick overview. Now let's go ahead and get into how to solve this particular quadratic equation. And we'll be thinking about these various techniques here, right? Maybe we could take the square root of both sides. Maybe we could factor. Or maybe we have to use a quadratic formula. Okay, but what is the fastest, most direct uh, path? 
Well, some of you might be like, all right, well, I know that I have a binomial times a binomial, and you've got a multiplication situation here. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, I'll just use that FOIL technique. A FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. And it's basically just multiplying two uh, polynomials or two binomials together. So I can take this 4x, for example, and uh, the first is to multiply by the first uh, terms of each binomial. So that would be 4x times this x right here. Let's go ahead and just see how this plays out. So 4x times x is 4x squared. Then I'll take this 4x, that's first, outer. This is the outers right here, right? So 4x and 1. So 4x times 1 is 4x. The inner is the 5 and the x. This is the inner terms. So that would be 5x. And then the last would be the last of each. So 5 times 1 is 5. And then I can go ahead and clean up this uh, um, polynomial here, this quadratic trinomial to be technical about it. So I can combine these like, ter uh, like terms, 4x and 5x is 9x. So I got 4x squared plus 9x plus 5. Wow, that's it's a lot of work, right? So here we go. So some of you, maybe a lot of you would do this because you can see right here, you're like, okay, I guess the, I don't know what else to do. I should just start multiplying here. And then at this point, maybe kind of assess what you can do. Well, this is not the best path forward here. Now, you could, for those of you that know about the quadratic formula, this particular uh, quadratic equation is written in standard form. This would be your A value, A equals 4. This would be your B value, B equals 9. And this would be your C value, uh, C is equal to 5. If you don't even know what I'm talking about here, don't worry about it. This has to do with the quadratic formula. But what we're doing here is we're going in the wrong direction, okay? Now, this could still get you the answer. It's just like taking the long road, right? So let's say you're in point A and you want to go to point B. Uh, you know, the best and shortest distance is a straight line. You don't want to take this path and like go like this and then get to the same place, right? <laughs> That's what we're trying to avoid. And uh, anyways, so this is kind of like a lot of you might start off the problem this way, okay? Uh, so what you have to realize and when you're solving various type of equations is even though you can get the right answer, you need to do enough practice problems so you can identify, you know, the most direct paths forward. And this one has a various, very obvious, easy approach to solve. And I'm going to show you that right now. But before we see that easy uh, method, if you have not yet subscribed, you don't even realize how much that helps me on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to kindly ask you to smash that like button. And when you do that, hit my notification uh, or hit that notification bell because you'll get my latest content. I am posting math videos basically every day from basic uh, math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you're studying mathematics, I'm trying to help you out. I just love teaching math. But thank you so much for watching this particular video. Now back to the problem. Okay, so what is the easiest approach? Well, the first thing you want to realize is that, again, we are dealing with a quadratic equation. So that's something that, you know, you'll uh, just through practice and just learning this stuff, you should be able to identify. You'll be like, okay, I got a binomial times a binomial. I know I got a quadratic equation. But before you get too hasty here, we need to take note that this equation is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if this equation was equal to another number like seven, that would change everything. Okay, but it's not, all right? If this was equal to a number other than zero, then in fact, we would have to multiply, okay? Then we'd have to put everything equal to zero. So when you're solving quadratic equations, uh, one of the primary things you need to be, uh, not every single time, but often you're going to have to set the entire equation equal to zero. But in this case, it's already equal to zero. Now, why is that so cool? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna tell you the reason right now. So what we have here, we have this thing. This is just a binomial, but it represents a quantity. It just represents something, right? We have something times. This is multiplication going on right here, all right? So this thing times this thing is equal to zero, okay? So we have, you know, let's just call it A times B is equal to zero. We have two things such that we multiply them together, we get zero. Well, how can... How can we end up with an answer of zero if we're multiplying? How, what's the only way that you can get zero? Well, the only way that can happen is if this thing right here is zero, if one of these things is zero, because zero times this would be zero, 
or both of these things are zero. Zero times zero is zero, okay? And this is called the zero product property, okay? Effectively, we recognize that we have this times this is equal to zero, so one or both must be zero. So in order to solve for x, what we can do here is simply take each of these uh, factors, okay, uh, these binomials, and set that uh, them uh, respectively equal to zero and solve for x. It's as simple as that. Now, you might kind of like figure, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, I kind of thought that's what I needed to do, but it's important that you understand why you're doing it. Okay, this is uh, the result of the zero product property, or you're using the zero product property or concept in order to solve. Okay, and this comes up over and over again, uh, not only with quadratic equations, but with more advanced polynomial uh, equations. So very, very important concept. So this is it. Okay, so basically, we have each of these binomials, we'll set it equal to zero, and we'll solve for x. So let's go through it, super easy stuff. So x plus one is equal to zero. All I have to do is subtract one from both sides of the equation. So this is one of my solutions. And to be more specific about it, I could say that's x sub one. So one solution's here. And then here, I'm gonna subtract five from both sides of the equation and I'll end up with four x is equal to negative five. Of course, I need to just go ahead and divide the equation, uh, uh, both sides of the equation by four. So you end up with x is equal to negative five fourths. And this could be my second solution. Again, a quadratic equation two solutions. In this case, they are two real number solutions. In other words, these fall, um, they're part of the real number system. But, uh, you know, I don't want to digress too much, okay, because the quadratic equations is a huge topic, and there's a lot to learn. It kind of as I kind of reviewed here, um, you know, you're like, wow, and there's much, much more. There's a lot of things that you need to know. And typically, in most algebra courses or math courses that involve algebra. This is like a full unit, full chapter. You know, it's a lot of material. So give yourself time, uh, you know, to learn this stuff, okay? If you're just trying to learn everything, you're gonna end up, you know, real fast. You're gonna end up looking like that. You just get overwhelmed. You're like, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. Well, it's only too hard if you're trying to, you know, the way I like, uh, the way I like to think about it, it's like climbing. It's no different than climbing some steps, all right? And here's some poor steps here, <laughs> my lazy version of steps. If you're here, okay, I know you want to be up here, right? Uh, it's like, yes, yes, we want to be up here. But guess what? If you spend all day trying to get there, you're just like jumping really high. You're going to get tired. You're going to like, oh, that's not working. I, I'm just trying to skip I'm trying to skip these steps to get up here. It doesn't work, okay? That's it's just going to get you, you know, frustrated. The best method to learn, okay, and not only math, is just focus one skill at a time, okay? In order, just climb each step and build a strong foundation, all right? There's no other substitute for it. That's why you have to do a lot of various practice problems. But you can't practice this stuff unless you have a good solid understanding of you know what's going on and that's you know what I um, what I'm passionate about is I'm trying to deliver clear and understandable math instruction you know stuff that makes sense to you so you could be like oh okay I get it now you have to take that knowledge uh, to develop a skill and that only comes through practice okay so with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day